question. Uh, myself, Professor Chetanji Kunapure, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Polish Institute of Technology, Solapur. Uh, these, this is the learning outcome for the student. At the end of this session, student will be able to explain the basics of repair and rehabilitation. Actually, repair rehabilitation is very vast, big topic. Just that is a research area also. But student, at least uh, they should know the what are the basics of repair and rehabilitation. This is the basic idea behind this uh, video. Now, let's see the introduction. Why any structure, any building uh, is in need of repair or is in need of rehabilitation. That's, that is the main uh, thing. First thing is the when the structure, structural components are subjected to distress and the distress in the building is common thing or these are the common occurrences. Second thing is uh, when any building uh, element or component uh, is subjected to crack. Why it is subjected to crack? When the stress in it is reaching the limit of its strength, then uh, the crack formation is possible. Third thing is uh, buildings are subjected to stresses definitely and that is because of uh, one thing is the gravity loads first is dead load live load and second is the lateral load that is a seismic load or wind load so gravity load as well as seismic load or wind load these two are the causes of stresses which are arising in the building the building components and uh, one more last reason the thermal movements may be expansion or contraction due to the temperature changes moisture changes chemical action weathering action these are also causing deformations internally in the material of building so let us see uh, distress how it can be classified uh, there are two ways to classify the distress one is structural second is non-structural let us see what is mean by structural distress uh, if the distress is due to the faulty design faulty design calculations consideration of the loads or due to the faulty faulty construction practices inappropriate practices or last is overloading you will find structural distress in the uh, building Next is these types of distresses, structural distress can endanger the safety of the building also. Now let us see the example. For example, when overlading is done on any flexural or beam or C beam member, definitely extensive cracking you will observe for that beam and that is due to the overloading. Now in case of non-structural cracks or the cracks which are not for the structural component or because of uh, if the crack is forming uh, instead of these reasons, these are not endangered to the safety of the building but this may look unsightly and it create an impression of faulty work also improper practice also let us see what is mean by non-structural distresses these types of distresses are induced because of stresses uh, in the building components uh, these generally don't directly result in structural weakening but the cracks which are non-structural cracks are subjected to the weathering actions atmospheric actions may enter into these cracks and the reinforcement rebar may be subjected to corrosion and this render to the structure unsafe and finally it may lead to collapse also now one question is for you you just pause the video and see this question and try to answer this there are uh, two fill in the blanks this is dash dash crack don't directly result into structural weakening and faulty construction and overloading leads to dash dash crack. Now which types of uh, cracks are due to these reasons that you have to answer. Pause the video, think over that and give the answer. The answer is, first is non-structural crack don't directly result in structural weakening and faulty construction overloading leads to structural crack. This is the answer. Now, we are talking about the distress, then overloading, all those things. Now, finally, what is the effect of all those? That is the cracking that we are talking about. And let us see uh, what are what is the nature of crack and what are the causes of the crack. Now, uh, in building components which are subjected to the stresses, uh, if the stress tend to move the building away from the steep portion of the buildings, which acts as a fixed point due to dimensional changes. This is one reason. Second is, in symmetrical structures, the center of structure or even we can call as a center of resistance acts as a fixed point 
and movement of the symmetrical building takes place away from the center on either side. This is the second reason. Third is, a building as a whole can move easily in a vertical direction, but its horizontal movement in horizontal direction is restricted by the action of substructure and its foundation. So deflection of the building is possible, deformations are possible, but in horizontal direction its movement uh, or translation is difficult. That's why there may be a reason of arising vertical cracks on walls and this is more frequent phenomena. Now the stresses in building, com building components are of three natures. One is tensile type of nature, compressive nature or having shear stresses or shear nature. Now these cracks, once it, these are forming, then this will spoil the internal friction of the building by allowing moisture to percolate and this will increase the maintenance cost of your building. The maintenance may be in the form of painting, repetitive painting, again plaster, some repair and uh, this will increase your maintenance cost. Now it is necessary to stitch or seal or stitching or sealing of the cracks is required. This is necessary and need when the cracks are formed. Now most of the material in the building, it may be uh, mortar, concrete, it may be masonry, all these are very strong in compression, but these are weak in shear and tension. So forces of small magnitude of tension or shear type may cause ten uh, tensile or shear stresses and will result into cracking. So the cracking phenomena is uh, uh, very often in the building, this is because of this reason. So let's see what is the classification of the cracks and this depends upon based uh, on its width of crack. Now thin crack it is always less than 1 mm in width, medium crack it is uh, having width of 1 to 2 mm and wide crack is called as when the width is more than 2 mm. Now this is explaining the nat uh, nature of the crack or uh, even the type pattern of the crack. Cracks may be of uniform width throughout or may be narrow at one end and gradually gets wider at the other end. Uh, this is entirely the, the very complex phenomena, what is the type of crack, how it is developed. Next is track may, uh, cracks may be straight, stapled, toothed, map pattern, random, direction wise it is vertical, horizontal or diagonal. This may be the different patterns of the cracks. Crack may be at the surface or it may extend to the full depth of the member also. It may be beam, column or it may be uh, walls. Closely fine cracks at surface of material is called as crazing. So this phenomena uh, is called as crazing when very fine cracks are uh, on the surface of the plaster. Basically mapping we can call. Cracks due to different causes have different characteristics. And by careful observation only of these characteristics we can diagnose this or we can diagnose the causes of cracking and the adopt, we can adopt appropriate remedial treatment for that type of crack. Now, what is the way to understand this entire problem? First is a visual investigation of the concrete. So this investigation technique can be broadly classified as destructive or non-destructive. Now how that can be decided? We should first uh, visualize visual investigation and walk around the survey we should carry out and it should be taken to decide what type of technique is to be used for that type of cracking. Next is photography and notes should be taken from the site, concrete, site concrete. Digital photography of large area is helpful in documenting overall condition. So overall condition of the building then afterward they will, whenever the photograph is taken in detail you, you can see very uh, closely you can see what is the overall condition of that concrete. Now close up views can be used to check details such as crack width and its direction. So based on the crack formation and its direction uh, the diagnosis can be made. Now these are the binoculars, telephoto lenses which are used to get the more accurate information and record the same for further use. Visual investigation involves looking for and analyzing cracks. So different phenomena are also explained here, spelling of concrete or uh, fine cracks or any other cause, such defects which can be seen without uh, digging or scratching the surface of the structure or its element. Now to aid this visual examination, the following checklist is uh, made and the information which 
shall be or should be collected in this checklist. This must be as follows. Huh? First is the details of uh, owner and occupier. Next thing is the type of occupancy also. So this detail must be taken first on site. Then the type of the structure, whether this is RC structure, is it load bearing structure, uh, stone masonry structure, brick masonry structure, the type of structure is important. Next, the dimensions. Dimensions of the structure or structure element. In case of building, it must be taken at the plinth level, it must be taken at the floor level. In case of the members, the exact uh, member, uh, irrespective of its uh, extent, the member shall be measured as it is, which is actual on site. Now, the interconnection of elements that is also important. The interconnection means the connection between walls, connection between the wall to roof, connection between wall to foundation also. This is possible only in load bearing wall to foundation. Now, material information what is brick masonry? What type of mortar mortar, mortar is used? Plastering, uh, internal plastering, external plastering, then the material like concrete, grade of the concrete, what was uh, uh, considered during the design and execution. This material information is required. Now, orientation of the building or building component with respect to north that is also important. Most important is the climatic condition prevailing and wind direction. So, the climatic condition prevailing that is very important and based on that the what weathering actions have taken place and what uh, damage that is made to the structure, structural component uh, because of weathering action that can be also. Now the signs of the deterioration, age of the building and details of the maintenance and previous repair retrofitting. This, these details are also important. Now these are the equipment and accessories that will be helpful in the visual examination. First is building drawing, layout plan, camera, binoculars, magnifying glass, flashlight, a compass, tape record. These are the references for the video. Thank you.